uh, please give a warm welcome to Sabina. Thanks. Okay, so yeah, this work is about sustainable recommender systems. And a motivation here is that there's this big gap between what we say we want to do or what we think we want to do and what we actually do. And uh, one way to refer to that is the intention behavior gap. And this comes about in shopping when we might want to buy sustainable products and then when we go somewhere like Amazon.com, uh, we just fail to do so. And this can be for many reasons. Uh, people lack information or they have too much information. There's all these different kinds of uh, certifications and labels and phrases and it's hard to navigate that space. Accessibility has been an issue for people. Um, their store might, or the page they're viewing, might not have the sustainable products that they care about. And insufficient recommendations can just compound these issues, especially when uh, recommender systems don't have any knowledge about sustainability. So to overcome these issues, a sustainable recommender might have some knowledge of sustainability it uh, might be able to discover and guide people towards sustainable products. And it might uh, then make relevant recommendations uh, of these products. So it doesn't matter if something is sustainable. If you don't want it, uh, it's, you're not going to purchase it. So we need both sustainable and relevant recommendations. But there are challenges with this. Uh, there is no ground truth knowledge of sustainability. Uh, it means something different to each and every one of us. And like I said, there are all these different phrases out there. Uh, so one thing we might do is just ask experts to label a bunch of products, but obviously this doesn't scale, it's very expensive. And if we rely on the information we have, like organic uh, certifications, uh, these labels are sparse and we're gonna miss a lot of potentially sustainable products. So our approach aims to discover uh, sustainability uh, scores. So we model latent sustainable scores and uh, we use these to discover su sustainable products without using any ground truth labels. And we also assign sustainability mindedness scores to customers. And we uh, use three signals of sustainability to do this. So we use uh, domain knowledge such as uh, information from trusted sources about sustainability. We use product metadata such as the certifications. And we can use people's uh, shopping history to propagate information to products. And we do all of this in probabilistic soft logic, which you probably saw a lot about yesterday. So um, some quick bullet points are that it's a probabilistic programming language. It allows us to share information across variables and benefit from collective inference. We can express the latent variables that we care about. We can encode all of our domain knowledge with simple logical rules. And critically, these logical rules actually template probabilistic graphical models and a particular efficient class called hinge loss Markov random fields. So there's more information about that. And scalability is definitely a problem here because you could get a lot of um, people and a lot of products. So to go into the details of the model, we're going to predict if a customer is going to purchase a given product. And that's our target variable. And while we infer that value, we're also going to infer these latent variables. So to what extent is a customer sustainability minded and to what extent is a product sustainable. And then we also have this kind of auxiliary variable predict to purchase, which is, um, just helps us uh, model all of this information. And it's really important to know that these, uh, the values to these random variables are in between zero and one, and that's good because we don't have to say that a customer is absolutely gung-ho about sustainability, but you can be so to some degree, like 0.8 and enthusiasm, so that's useful. And to look at the, some of the rules, so the first thing we wanna do is to predict which products are sustainable, so we use some metadata, such as your certifications or specialties, like uh, vegan is a specialty, or um, kosher. And then we could also use domain knowledge, like if, you're, if your product and your brand is sustainable, you should also be sustainable. 
And a nice feature here is that we learn the weights to the rules from data, so that way we can actually kind of look at the relative importance of the certifications and iterate on that with domain experts to see if like organic is a better predictor than um, fair trade, for example. And so to predict if a customer is sustainable or not, we could look at their purchasing history and say if they've um, purchased sustainably, they might be sustainability minded. And we could also use that collective inference I mentioned to say that if customers are similar, their sustainability mindedness score should also be similar. And then we want to predict future purchases. So we could look at what you've purchased before. And that's really specific to this domain uh, where uh, what you've purchased before you might uh, purchase again. Uh, we could use collective inference and we could also uh, utilize external predictions uh, influenced by the hyper, um, fr or hybrid framework. Uh, so if we have a good prediction from another recommender system, we could just add that in. And then, um, yeah, we could just say, sorry, if you uh, are predicted to purchase something, you might purchase it. So we're gonna evaluate to two standard baselines and we're going to uh, have about 5,000 customers in our test set and 21,000 products. And this is all on Amazon grocery data. So that's why repeat purchases might happen pretty often. And this is joint work with Amazon. So just looking at the, the rough results, we see a huge improvement over uh, the baseline of around 81%, and these are statistically significant. But what we care about a little bit more is how we do on discovering sustainable products. So we give uh, a set of the products that had high sustainability scores according to the model and asked an evaluator to say if they're reasonably, partially, partially or not sustainable. And overall, the human evaluator found around 74% of products to be reasonably sustainable. But uh, we also wanted to see the impact of these different signals. So we found that we got the highest quality discoveries if we used either metadata or domain knowledge. So if, if you have questions about how exactly we looked at this, you could ask me later. But, um, that was interesting because it says if, if you really just care about the sustainability scores, maybe use these two pieces of information. But if we used all of the information, we got a wider pool of potential products. So if what we're really doing is um, getting a nice pool to give to another team of human evaluators and just saving them some time, then maybe it, it helps to use all of the information. So the kind of information you might want probably depends on your use case. So uh, to summarize, we have an effective uh, recommender system which improved over the baseline. We found around 74% of uh, sustainable products, products the model thought to be sustainable to actually be so. Uh, but there is a lot of future work. So uh, like I said, sustainability means something different to every person. So in future work, we might actually take that into account and look at things like uh, animal friendliness versus environmental friendliness or local. Uh, we might incorporate more external predictions. So right now we're using pretty simple models, but we could take the best recommender systems out there and incorporate them into the model. And uh, there are also um, contextual shopping patterns that would be really interesting here, especially because it's groceries. We see a lot of seasonal fluctuations and day of week patterns. So we could definitely use that as well. And one final note is that we um, are assuming that if you want to shop sustainably, there might be a sustainable product out there for you, but really, uh, maybe it's more sustainable to not buy anything at all. So uh, I don't know how a recommender might take that into account, but that's, I think, the, the big future work is do you even need to buy anything? So that's it. Thank you. Don't buy stuff. Great <laughs> end of a presentation. Uh, questions uh, over there, yeah? Hi, Robin Burke from DePaul University. One of the things I, I didn't see in your list of future work is um, comparison of your approach with other existing approaches that use side information. 
um, in addition to the sort of um, sort of pure collaborative ones that you were using as baselines. And I was just wondering what you were planning to do along those lines. Yeah, it's definitely something we could compare to. I, I mean, that would be interesting because how you incorporate the site information is definitely a part of what you're going to get out of it. So, yeah, that we could definitely do that. Um. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm just uh, interested uh, to learn more about uh, domain knowledge data. Is it uh, more like a structured data? Is there a certain, are there certain sources? And how do you then uh, use that data? Yeah, so now we just really simply got reviews from a few websites that said if brands were sustainable. Um, and then we had, so Steven, Steve on the paper is on the sustainability team at Amazon. So he's a, a behavioral scientist. So he um, could iterate with me about like which, which sources we could trust or not. And then um, that was just one form. But he had a lot of information that we didn't have time to put in the model, like um, which, which ones are, are trustier or more trustworthy. And then also, like I said, it really depends like what you care about. And that's kind of where he wants to go. Like if you, if you care about environmental friendliness, some certifications of um, sustainability might not apply at all. So that might be something that we could add more of that domain knowledge of in, like, if you care about water sustainability, then we really need to use this information and uh, we can't give it a high sustainability score even if it's vegan. So, um, yeah, there's a lot we can add in. But right now, it was just using um, those knowledge of brands. Okay, thanks. Yeah. There's another question all the way over there. Yep. Hi, I'm Rafael Souza from Accenture. We saw the intro on PSL yesterday and you just used it extensively. So could you comment on how PSL helped you iterate and find the final model that you presented as a tool? Sure, I mean, the nice thing is that you don't have to really, when you get the rules out, you, you get the relative importance of the weights and so you could just look at a rule and if you fed some data in and the weight goes to zero, then you know that's a bad rule. And if you fed the data in and the weight gets higher than everything else, then you could say, like for example, um, USDA organics seem to be the best predictor of things. So it, it had really high weight. And there, um, also the fact that we get the sustainability mindedness scores of people. So then we could kind of look at their past um, purchases and see if that really makes sense or not. So that's, that's one way is that you could just kind of look at what you get out of it in a way that you can't with other models. I don't know if that answers the question. Yes, Thank you, perfect. Okay. Hi, uh, I have a question. So uh, actually in your e-commerce platform, we have a lot of sellers, we have a lot of operation persons. It means they have a lot of domain knowledge how to do a lot of zoomers. So for your framework, is it very easy to add such kind of zoomers by different sellers? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I think the, the powerful thing is that you don't have to depend on it. So you could use like the, um, the kind of similarity rules that I showed are very much like collaborative filtering, right? Where you say if people are similar, they might have similar ratings or similar purchase patterns. But then on top of that, you could use um, individual expert knowledge uh, and, and you could kind of see also like which has more impact the kind of data-driven side or the domain knowledge side. So yeah, you would just add a rule, like uh, this, this seller says this, and uh, yeah. Uh, actually for the zoomers, you can add some predicates and, and the conclusions. So there are some parameters, for example, some weights. So can you have some tool to automatically adjust such kind of parameters? Yeah, yeah, so the model does learning, so after you give it data, you'll, you'll get different weights than what you started with. So you might see something like if you thought like this, this person should have had higher weight after you feed in the data, that might have changed. And okay, so, thank you. Yeah. One more short question we have time for, yep. Hi, Imri Sofer from TripAdvisor. Um, I wonder if you can comment about the differences in this domain compared to other domains. Um, it seems like it's a poach for using recommendation with site information, and it seems that you can translate directly that to all other domains like movie and music. So I wonder about the differences. 
Yeah, no, there's no, like, if you wanted to discover, like, latent genres and use that to recommend playlists, I think that would be a perfect use case also, especially because uh, you could use a lot of temporal information uh, about the playlists, which you couldn't do in a lot of models, too. So you could say, like, you know, you can condition on rock and then say uh, rock should generate song one and song one should lead to song two and you could have rich dependencies there. So yeah, I mean, the domain, we chose sustainability because it's important and it's a really interesting problem that they do have like all these products and how do you go through them and find the ones that people want. And in terms of accessibility, there's also the issue of maybe the product that is really the best and most sustainable is missing from the catalog. So we started with sustainability, but like it's not domain dependent at all. Thank you. Great, let's uh, thank the speaker again.